Many thanks to Daisy Podcast, Pandemonium, Lion Lost, Wolves of Daisy, and the Great Escape server for making this video possible. Daisy 1.19 has introduced two new weapons while increasing the damage of the lacking 545 rounds, not only making the new SSG Sniper Rifle a fantastic weapon, but greatly buffing the AK-74 in the process, along with two other ammo types. So in this video, we're going to be checking out all the weapon changes that come along with 1.19. Starting with the newly added BK-12, which is a break-action single-shot shotgun capable of firing buckshot, slugs, and rubber shells like other shotguns currently do in DZ. Although the BK-12 is single-shot and may on the surface appear to be a weaker weapon, the buckshot it fires certainly shouldn't be underestimated, capable of one-shotting players at close range with very little skill needs to do so, because just one of these pellets needs to hit your head to KO you. The BK-12 spawns in farms, villages and towns and is restricted to tier 1 and 2, spawning only on tier 1 on Livonia, spawning a little more often than its closest cousin, the BK-43 double barrel shotgun. While both of these weapons have low range, low fire rates and are big on the inventory, they can only be had up to 1400 meters away and are among the best early game weapons that you can get your hands on. The BK-12 and double barrel BK-43 are almost identical in how they handle and how much damage they do too, so the double barrel is without question superior here obviously because it has two barrels, but telling them apart when you come across either of them on the floor or inside a player's hands would be close to impossible because they have the exact same wood finish on them and they sound exactly the same too. Similar to the double barrel 2, the BK-12 can be sawn off, but doing so doubles the recoil, it doubles the spread and seriously gimps the effective range for a measly reward of 17 extra slots from your inventory, so very much not worth it still unless you can't resist the look of a sawed off weapon. To summarise the BK-12's best and worst parts then, good damage, easy to find and relatively quiet for such a powerful weapon, but has low range, an incredibly low rate of fire and 27 slots in size. Similar to the Pioneer and CR527 currently in Daisy, the SSG-82 is a bolt-action sniper that fires intermediate ammo and can quickly be reloaded with its 5 round magazine. Unlike the Pioneer and the CR527 though, the SSG-82 spawns with a fixed optic as standard, which means you won't need to find an optic separately to make the most of what these weapons are good for, which is sniping. In addition, while the reticle does look similar to the PU scope, you get much more peripheral vision with the SSG-82, making it very similar to the Org A1 we got recently, which is the only other fixed optic weapon in DZ. Now because you can't attach an optic to it, you don't get the accuracy benefits of attaching the optic either, and you have much less versatility, obviously because you can't change your optic. With the SST-82 not coming with any type of iron sight either, so get ready to hip fire in CQB. The biggest drawback of the SSG though is that you cannot zero this weapon at all with fixed zeroing at 100 meters. So while it does have fantastic standard range of 450 meters, much further than the Pioneer and the CR527 is standard, it gets dominated by the other optics when you attach those optics to the Pioneer and CR527, which can zoom and zero much further. This may change, but if it doesn't, it means that the SSG is at best a decent mid-range sniper, which is fine because it's where the other intermediate ammo snipers sit too, capable of performing their best between 100 to 300 meters. For the SSD-82, this wouldn't have been possible without the 545 by 39 rounds getting a strong damage buff to bring them in line with the other ammo types this patch, making the SSD-82 actually output more health and shock damage initially than the Pioneer and the CR527. Now because the SSG has a 4 times optic as standard and is found in tier 2 plus police locations on both Livonia and Chernerus, along with its magazine, it's much easier to find than the Pioneer, initially does more health and shock damage, has twice the accuracy and has a base effective range 50% further out than the Pioneer, making the SSG a fantastic weapon at being a knockoff version of the Pioneer. I say knockoff because as soon as you attach a decent optic to the Pioneer and get that OP suppressor, the Pioneer is far superior in many ways, but again, is much harder to acquire, making it much more worthwhile to just hunt down the CR550 instead, skipping the Pioneer completely. Start with the SSG, move on to the CR550, forget the Pioneer exists. Ignoring rarity though, the benefits of the SSG over the Pioneer are here, which is a smaller list than that of how the Pioneer is better than the SSG. Also, here is a list of why the SSG is better than the CR527, but here's also a list of why the CR527 is better than the SSG. I'd say between these three weapons, it's a close call, but if I had to choose one of them based on all of the factors here, the CR527 does it for me due to it having a hunting optic and the CR527 having the best shock damage where it matters between 100 to 300 meters. Like I said earlier though, these three weapons are completely irrelevant when you get a high powered sniper. 
Summarizing the SSG82 then, it has good damage, very good range as standard and cannot jam, but has a slow rate of fire, cannot be zeroed at all, can be heard up to a monstrous 3.4 kilometers away, and is the heaviest weapon in DayZ. The biggest change to ammo goes to how the damage has changed on the previously lackluster 545 by 39 rounds used by the AK-74 and AKS-74U, which are also now used by the newly added SSG-82. The base health damage on this ammo type before was 80, now it's 115, and the shock damage was previously 90, now it's been increased to 115 too. The new SSG-82 uses the full force of this 115 value, so it does 115 health damage and 115 shock damage at point blank range, but the same can't be said about the AK-74 and AKS-74U. These two weapons, as a result of the damage buff, have received a bullet speed nerf, reducing the AK-74's bullet speed by 20% and the AKS's by 28%. Now because adjusting bullet speed is another way to adjust bullet damage in DayZ, this means that in 1.18 the AK-74 did 80 health damage and 90 shock damage, now doing 92 health damage and 102 shock damage per shot, firmly bringing it in line with the other assault rifles in DayZ. This is a major buff because the AK-74 is much easier to find compared to the other assault rifles. Basically, it's almost as strong as the AKM and AK-101 now, but is much easier to find, being found in Tier 2 and Tier 3 military locations. For this reason, I see the AK-74 being used a lot more now, but do be aware that this weapon's bullet speed has been reduced by 20%, like I said earlier, so it may feel different when you're shooting this weapon over range. The AKS-74U on the other hand got a 28% nerf to its bullet speed like I said earlier too, but this equates to an overall nerf for this weapon, widening the gap between the AK-74 and the AKS-74U. Because the bullet speed nerf was 28%, the damage of the AKS output was also decreased further, and it's pretty much the same as in 1.18, but it has 28% less bullet speed and penetration. Another ammo type that was changed this patch are the smoke rounds for the increasingly available M79 grenade launcher, now capable of one-shotting a player up to 100 meters away, doing 110 health damage at point blank range. Be aware though that the M79 has really, really bad accuracy, so I wouldn't try to shoot anybody with the smoke rounds past around 25 meters, but having the option to actually kill people with these smoke rounds will make them much more lootable in 1.19. In fact, in this patch, I believe players will use these rounds solely against players and infected because of how smoking areas is much more difficult now because they bounce off of absolutely everything and they roll down the slightest of declines too. They're very unpredictable. Even a wall directly in front of you will bounce these rounds back at you but somehow the devs have figured out a way to not have bounced rounds do damage to our characters. Perhaps they added this in this patch while maintaining the ability to damage other players with deflected rounds too which may mean that all ammo types in Daisy may no longer harm our characters but we can still deflect and hurt other characters. After testing with the flare cartridges too, I was unable to harm my character but I was able to harm other characters because the flare cartridges will now do damage to players. Unlike every other ammo type in DayZ though, the flare cartridge does zero shock damage so cannot KO anybody but it does do 10 health damage per flare. This 10 health damage drops off after 10 meters very rapidly, cannot penetrate the brain and kill our characters and the slow falling flare doesn't inflict any damage to our characters, it's like a different entity. Now while the flare gun is technically a projectile based weapon that inflicts damage to players and infected, I don't believe it's intended to kill stuff because using your fists is much more reliable damage and it makes a lot less noise too. 10 damage is not much, but if you're looking for a new challenge, the flare gun certainly delivers. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.